children of God are by destiny children of exploits, designed to thrive where others fail, to conquer the obstacles others fear, and to do the impossible. But notwithstanding how great a destiny God has in view for you, you'll need faith to make it a reality. Faith Moments brought to you by Patrick Fainu Ministries would give you insight that would guarantee your victory over the forces of poverty, sickness and disease. It will enable you stand in the midst of opposition. And now, Reverend Patrick Fainu. I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Blessings of the Lord be upon all of you, wherever you are under the sound of my voice. I believe and trust that it is well with you and your house. It is well with you and your house. I declare that to you, wherever you are. Um, please invite your friends and loved ones. Be a blessing to somebody. All right, by sharing this broadcast and um, let it let it go viral, let it go far. Invite somebody, be a blessing. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Share it on your timelines. Post it on your your group um, your group posts and all that good stuff. Because it's all it's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. I mean, you can't go wrong talking about Jesus. And who he is and what he's done for us. You just can't go wrong. And especially if you have to um, talk about his spirit, which is the Holy Spirit that he promised, he promised you and I to receive um, and then to uh, be able to know even the truth of the gospel. All right. And so. Um, we're talking to you in a little a little while about understanding the the word of God by the Holy Spirit, beloved. You you can you can really understand it. You know the way through the lenses of God. If you if you if you read it without the help of the Holy Spirit, you ain't gonna get it. I mean, I I, I see a whole lot of people speaking things and saying things and it don't really matter you ain't gonna get it period so you need the holy spirit you know to help you to get it and so if you have not received him you you might as well do it because it will help he will help you to come out of your out of this religious way of you know living the christian life uh but you will live it the christian life in its proper context and that is with a clear understanding um, of who you are in Christ Jesus. So um, go right ahead and invite somebody, okay, so you can be a blessing to somebody. Um, doing this here to, all right, um, Richard, Richard, the shortest man I know, <laughs> Richard Atobi ministry richard is online richard god bless you as well blessings of the lord be upon you richard go ahead and share it to your friends and loved ones and be a blessing to somebody okay all right let me see who else is there i send greetings to you i send you a shout richard and um, everybody else who else pastor pinky Blessings of the Lord be upon you and your house. Pinky blessings. Uh, Peter Gonzalez, I send up blessings of the Lord on you wherever you are. Please go right ahead and share it. Share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. Okay? Let's do that. We, we are to bless. We are blessing. Don't be praying for blessings. You already bless. Don't be praying for blessings. You are already blessed. See, you pray for blessings when you don't know you are blessed. And if you don't know who you are in Christ Jesus, then you do this religious, you know, things. It's about time you come out of that in Jesus' mighty name and be free. Amen. And so go right ahead and be a blessing to somebody by sharing the broadcast and um, <clears throat> let it go viral and be a blessing. All right, be a blessing to somebody. 
in Jesus' name. Okay, let me see what I can do here as well. And uh, <clears throat> we'll be um, talking about talking about what gives us <clears throat> excuse me, what gives us the power and authority to be Christians. I, I've come to realize that I mean, uh, you know, not understanding who you are, it's it's not good. Not understanding who you are, man, I tell you, it's not good. It's not good. Now, if you are ready and um, I am, uh, let's go straight to the Word of God. All right. Um, let me let me um, uh, remind you to get your Bibles with you if you have it, and if you don't, please make sure you get your notepads and pens and note uh, pencils and all that, and take down some notes. You you have to you know take down some notes. It's gonna bless you. All right, it will help you to get into the Word of God, beloved. If you don't read the Word of God for yourself, you will be misled and deceived. Can I say that again? If you don't don't read the word of God for yourself, you will not can, you will be misled and be deceived. A lot of people hear a whole bunch of stuff, you know, religious jargons, um, and they believe it. And it's not biblical. It's not scriptural. And believing religious jargons uh, will not really bless you. You be uh, believing something that don't work. You be, be uh, believing something that has no value. You are believing something that has no foundation, and that will not help you. So, you see that you are still in the same place and not seeing yourself moving forward because you are believing. Listen, let me say something I usually say: when you receive wrong, you will believe wrong. When you believe wrong, you will live wrong when you will live wrong you will act wrong it's as simple as that when you believe wrong message when you believe wrong message you are going to receive it wrongly when you see when you receive it wrongly you're going to believe it wrongly when you believe it wrongly you're going to act uh, live wrongly and when you live wrongly you're going to act on it wrongly and so you have to be very, very careful what you are believing and what you are receiving. It's also important. OP, blessings of the Lord be upon you. So if you receive wrong, you will live wrong. So make sure you are receiving right. And the only way you're going to receive right is for you to read the word of God for yourself. Brother Michael, blessings upon you and, and uh, a big shout to you and your house. When you receive wrong, of when you receive a wrong message, you are going to believe it wrongly. And that's how it's going to apply into your life for you to live it. You know, it's, it's, it's so sad seeing people sometimes, what, when they open their mouth, you can tell what they, what they believe. When they open their mouth, you can tell what they believe. Mm -hmm. You can tell what they believe. And so um, I want to encourage you to read the word of God. All right. Position yourself for the help of the Holy Spirit to teach you. Now, remember, Jesus says, when the spirit of the Lord comes, he will dwell with you and he will be in you. And he will guide you to all truth will guide you is the spirit of God who will guide you to all truth you can do it on your own you can't listen to somebody's you know release just jargons and pick it up on yourself I'll give you one like heaven help those who help themselves that is religious nonsense it's not in the Bible and um God, uh, what everybody has an uh, an angel. What, what what is something like that? Somebody was telling me yesterday. Where, where you see that? As a believer, you have to understand what Jesus says and uh, live that. 
believers or Christians are people who have believed, receive and believe Jesus, number one, and his finished work. And therefore, live according to that which they have believed of him as followers. That is what Christians ought to do. You don't go out and believe in all kinds of other beliefs and still call yourself a Christian. Well, you ain't no Christian. Mind you, Christianity came or started after the Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit has come. That's when Christianity started. Not even when Christ was on earth. Christianity started after Pentecost. Prior to that, the people were called the way and whatever else they were called. But Christianity started when, when the promise had come, Jesus promised the Holy Spirit that he is the one who will come and help us. We, the believers, and such a beauty to have the Holy Spirit teach you things and you know, prompt you about things and guide you about things and lead you to things. And it's a beauty. And so without the Holy Spirit, you're going to be believing all kinds of beliefs. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. You know, for me, a time has come where you don't try to sugarcoat the word. You can't sugarcoat the word. It's either you get it or you don't get it. And I, I told somebody yesterday that, Jesus himself, he didn't, convince, he didn't convince everybody. There are a bunch of people out there who didn't believe in him. And he left them on this earth and he left. He finished his work and he left. So he ain't going to try to try to make it a job to try to convince nobody. The Holy Spirit is the one who does that work. Mm -hmm. But every, listen, everybody know how to cry out to God. Trust me when I tell you this. Everybody know how to cry out to God. Find yourself in a ditch and you will see who you who you, you scream out for. Find yourself in a ditch. An atheist was sitting in a plane and the pilot made an announcement that the plane is just about to take a nosedive. An atheist. Atheist who don't believe in God. The first word, in the, I mean, the pilot said, everybody pray out to your God because there's, where we are, we can't get no assistance. We're just going to go down. May, and he says, may God help us. Well, everybody started screaming and all that. Atheist opened his mouth and said, Jesus. Atheist. Everybody know how to call God when they are in trouble. So don't worry yourself about people when you are, they don't want to hear the word. The truth of the word, that is, I want, I've i stopped worrying myself about it. Because I know that when you find yourself in that tight corner, you're going to call him. So when we, you know, you hear or you see people like some of us coming to talk to you about the word of God, you better take it seriously. Because after all, we're not twisting your hand for some money in your pocket. We are not. God know how to take care of us. And the truth that, that Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will guide you to the truth, that truth is already in his own suit. You don't have to dress it. That truth Jesus spoke about is already dressed up. The, the lies and the religious lies that you need to, you need to receive that needs to be dressed. That needs to be, you know, sugar-coated and, and garnished and, uh, and uh, make it nice and you know, present it to you for you to believe. But when you believe a wrong belief, beloved, you're going to be on a treadmill. On a treadmill, you know what a treadmill is? It's an exercise. I go on it when I get to the gym. You are standing at the same place, but you think you're moving forward, standing right there. You ain't going nowhere. Beloved, Christianity becomes a lifestyle. You, you believe it even if you don't see things working. You still believe. 
Mm -hmm. It becomes a lifestyle. You just know that it's going to work. You just know that you don't. Know. You see, when you come to the place where you know that you know that you know, that it don't matter how the situation is, you just know that you know, that ain't no, nothing is going to move you from, from the knowing, knowing of what you know. Trust me. It's so exciting. And you just know the outcome. You know the outcome. Why? The beauty of it is that the Holy Spirit is all-knowing. The Holy Spirit is all-knowing. And so he knows, since he knows everything, and he is the only person who also knows the truth, the deep things of God, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, 11. He is the only one, only the Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God. Only the Bible says. And so since he's the only one who knows the things of God, he's the only one who's also going to reveal to you. And so you have to understand this, that for you to even communicate the gospel, you have to do it with understanding. And it's the Holy Spirit who will give you the understanding. Listen, the, the first disciples who were with Jesus, they had a better understanding after the Holy Spirit came upon them. They had a better understanding. That's why Jesus told them, he said, no, 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 just wait for the Holy Spirit. Wait for it because you're going to go out there to the world, talk to people about me. They're going to be asking you all kinds of questions and all that. Wait for the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive power and ability to talk about me. To talk about Jesus, you need you 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 need a, this, that that divine power and the ability to do it. Mm -hmm. And so, you need to understand who the person of the Holy Spirit is. Without the Holy Spirit, beloved, you say you're a Christian, fine. Ain't nobody going to take that from you. But you know within yourself that you are not confident even when you see the storm. You're not confident. To look at it and say, "This one, yeah, this this one is just, it just it's just a passing by thing." You just you go to sleep and you rest. That is why Jesus. Jesus, you have to understand. Jesus was a, a Jesus eh? was our perfect example. Perfect example. If you say you are a Christian or you want to be one, then let Jesus be the perfect example. Don't try to pick up anything from nowhere else. Jesus should be your perfect example. In the midst of the storm, in the midst of the storm, in the life of the, of the disciples who were with Jesus, in the midst of the storm, they were screaming and crying and, and shouting. They were afraid. Jesus was chillaxing. He was chillaxing down there and he worried himself. Why? Because he was full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was upon him. You don't believe that? Go to John chapter, um, John chapter chapter three, I believe, uh, um, when Jesus was baptized. You, the Spirit of God came upon him. Mm -hmm. After that, after the Spirit came upon him, the Spirit chapter four verse one said the Spirit then led him to the world. It was the Spirit, the Holy Spirit led Jesus to do all that he did, and so he knew exactly what he was saying to. You and I, among the first believers, wait for the Holy Spirit. You think Jesus didn't know what he was saying? He knew exactly what he was saying because he had a first experience. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. To do A, B, C, D, E, F, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to do these things. Now, where are you coming from talking about it? You don't. You can do it without the Holy Spirit. You joke. You're gonna be. You're gonna put up some religious clothes and come and sit down there and talk out of your head. No power. The other day, <laughs> the other day, these people came to Jesus and says, uh. uh
What shall we do? What shall, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? What shall we do? What shall we do? Come, come with me to John the um, John the, the sixth chapter of John. John chapter six. Look at John chapter six. Can you go ahead and start your watch parties and all that good stuff? Be a blessing to somebody, okay? John chapter six. Look at the 28 verse. The 28 and the 29 verse. They came to Jesus. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, take a step back. Take a step back. Um, Jesus answered them and said, uh, let me take you to, uh, let's, let's pick it up from verse, verse 22. All right, let's, let's do some reading. I said, read the word, read. Huh. If you don't read, you will be deceived and you will be fooled by people. Read the word of God. This ministry we emphasize in reading. You see, today technology has even, uh, it's expanded. One of those uh, end time signs. Technology has, has, has abound. Bibles are put in, in audio versions that you can just listen. Listen to the Bible. Watch, instead of you reading, you can even listen. Bible eyes. It's an app. You can get it on your, on your, on your phone. Bible is or I is. And you can read it. Can, you, you, you hear it. The audio. You, you have no reason not to get into the word of God. You have no reason. No excuse. John chapter 6. Let's pick it up from verse 22 to about um, 29 or 30. On the following day when the people who were standing... On the other side of the sea saw that there were no other boats there except that which except that one which his disciples had entered and that Jesus had not entered that boat with his disciples but his disciples had gone away alone however other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks and when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. They were looking for Jesus. 25. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? When did you come here? We're looking for you and all of a sudden you show up in this place. All right, Jesus said to them, I said to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate the loaves and uh, you were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. Underline that. Do not work for food that perish or perishes, but work for the food that has the eternal life or everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has set his seal on him. The seal Jesus is making reference to here is the Holy Spirit. God has set his seal on the Son. This seal here is the person of the Holy Spirit. I had a religious preacher pray, I mean, say the other day that when John the Baptist was uh, was baptizing, you know, people in the River Jordan, and uh, Jesus also came to be baptized, and then and then Jesus prayed for the heavens to open, and then you know, and and then God here had His prayer because the other people didn't pray. I, I look at this religious person. Who said to who said who said I will enrich myself with this gospel and he has done at the expense of foolish people like I who used to be. Thank God my eyes are opened by the help of the Holy Spirit. When I hear some of this crap, man, I feel like I want to get inside that television or whatever and just get them out of that place.
sir. Like the other people, they didn't repent. When John was saying, come, repent of your sins. Repent. They came to repent. But you see, Jesus was the one who was to come and lead us out of that religious laws and all that. And you, you come and stand there and talk some stuff. Man, anyway. 28. So anyway, um, then they said to Jesus, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? And Jesus answered them and said to them, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. That you believe in whom or in him whom he sent. That's the work of God. So if you are believing anything other than Jesus, <laughs> answer yourself. You want to do the work of God. I want to do the work of God. I want to do the work of God. I'm doing the work of God. What do you believe? Whom do you believe? I want to do the work of God. But whom do you believe? Is Jesus really complete? Because you see, beloved, when Jesus is, is complete, you don't struggle in telling people about him. Mm -mm. You don't struggle telling people about him. You don't try to convince nobody. When Jesus is complete in you, you don't convince nobody. You don't, it's not your job. Busy bodies. Like I think first or second Thessalonians talk about it. You don't try to. You don't make it a job. I don't see, honestly, when I sit down here, I realize, I don't see how you making it a job for preaching the gospel. How you make it a job? He said, go and tell people. He ain't tell you to stop what you're doing to tell people. Some of you who are gossipers out there, when you are talking about other people, you do, do you stop what you're doing? You are working and you pick up the phone and you start gossiping about somebody. Is that a job? You don't live what you're doing. Jesus says, tell people about me. And now you all want to make it out of job. Jesus said to them, this is the work of God. You want to know the work of God? This is the work of God. And the work of God is that you believe in him whom he sent. So believe in me. Now, if you can't believe in Jesus, how can you believe the Holy Spirit when he said he promised God to send the Holy Spirit to help you and me in everything that we do? How are you going to believe that? So you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You believe in directions. You don't believe in the Holy Spirit. You believe that you have to do this for God to help you do, uh, to, for God to do that for you. You don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Because how are you going to believe? You say, I believe in Jesus, but I don't know about the Holy Spirit. Are you serious? Get it right and get it straight. How are you going to believe that? Jesus says, this is the work. They asked him, look, look, they look at verse 28. They asked him, they, they came to Jesus and asked him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? The works. Because remember, these people were under the law. And under the law, it was such a conditional uh, law that you have to do A for God to do A. If you don't do this, God will not do that. That was the law. So they were mindset. They were programmed. They have received such a message as that. So that's all they know. So they, it became a lifestyle for them. Knowing that if you do this, then God will do that. Here is a dispensation and time in which we live in. That all that you ought to do is to believe. Receive Jesus and believe in what he has done. Jesus told them that. Listen, he says, believe. They were asking Jesus, uh, 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 what should we do that we, 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 we may work the works 
of God. And Jesus answered them and said, this is the work of God. This is the work of God. This is the work of God. The work of God is believe in the one that whom he God has sent. Believe. And that's he, Jesus. Come to John the 16th chapter. Come to John. Listen, your Christian life is going to be so exciting. I mean, you say Christian life, Christianity is boring. No, no, you don't. You haven't reached there. You don't know what it is to be a Christian. And so when you really understand what it means to be a Christian, you will understand that it's so simple and easy for you to believe and when you tell what you believe. John 16. John 16. Um, the 33rd verse says that, um, look at it. These things I've spoken to you that Jesus says, that in me, you may have peace in the world. You may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but it will be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Now, Jesus is making them and us to know that in him is our completeness. In him is our completeness. If you want to see how complete you are as a child of God, you can only see that in Christ Jesus. Again, Jesus came to fulfill what man could not do, where God is concerned. He came to fulfill it for us. He came to help us by leading an example and fulfilling all that took upon upon himself our sins and nailed it all on the cross of Calvary and made a world declaration. He, he, he declared this to the world that it is finished. I've done it for you. Now you ought to believe. I've done it for you. You now ought to believe. I've done it for you. Not forgetting the promise that he gave. That you can only become my disciples. See, you, you need to even think about that, what Jesus says. He says, you will become my disciples and tell people about me when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Say, so no wonder you can't tell nobody. All you get up in the morning, you're looking for, you know, a Sunday to come so that you can go and sit in that building called a church. So that somebody can talk to you about what your ears want to hear. That's what you're looking for. You're looking, you can't wait for Sunday to come and put on some clothes that we don't see you wearing. As though Sunday is when you're going to, Stop that joke, man. Grow up. He says, you become my disciples. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you haven't received the Holy Spirit. No wonder you can tell people about Jesus. And then you get a religious person come. Oh, you need to come to recycle you and just recycle you. Go and tell if you truly are Christian, tell people like I'm doing here. I'm sitting down here and millions of people are listening to me. Talking about Jesus. Do same. This conference is coming. The conference of September to remember. On just one day. I decided we're going to do this in here. Because there's some, there's some stuff that I. I'm not going to put it out here. No. Those who are really serious. They're going to get it. And so register. If you're serious about it, register. This is not in the religious stuff that you need to uh, No, register and get this, this truth. Register for it. Go to the website of this ministry and register. Registration is ongoing. Get your friends and loved ones 
and register. It's going to be a blessing to you. There's, there's some materials that will be sent to you. Uh, okay? Now, you know, you it's all part of the package. You're going to register. You're going to receive a certificate of attendance and all that from this ministry. Yes. So go go and go right ahead and, and register. You can register online or you can call in, you know, to get the registration information. All right? Call in to get that information as well. All the information is crawling. I believe it's on your screen now. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, before I do that, no, come to John chapter 14. And then I'm going to take you to Second Corinthians chapter 1. What time is it? All right. John chapter 14. You better believe in Jesus. I'm telling you, you, you have to believe in Jesus with everything you have. If, until you completely believe Jesus, you'll be believing all kinds of other beliefs. And those kind of beliefs will only put you on a treadmill. You will look like or sound like you feel like you're moving forward, but are you actually standing at the same place? You have not moved. John 14, verse 1. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. You believe in God, believe also in me. Believe also in me. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus is pointing to you as he has the people came to him and says, what shall we do to do the works of God? Jesus says, believe in the one that, that is, this is the work, this is the work of God. Man, I love the ways, we underline that. Go, go back there and underline that. He said, this is the work of God. John chapter 6, verse 28. He said, this is the work of God. That believe in the one, the work of God is not just being all over the place and with all kinds of stuff. You need to concord this, mix this thing up and apply it. Do this and that, 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 and that. No. The work of God is you believe in the one that God sent. And here he's still saying this. You believe in God, believe in me also. Believe in me. Believe in me. And you realize that when he was baptized and the heavens declared, he said, this is my beloved son. In him I am well pleased. This religious guy talking about that Jesus prayed and went because he prayed, the heavens opened. Well, he forgotten that Jesus was prophesied already thousands of years. That he is the one going to come and lead everybody out of sin. He didn't read that. So Jesus was a special person among all. And John the Baptist, who was six months older than Jesus himself, who said that he, this is the one who is to come. So it wasn't just for him praying that he, he, he knew how to pray to open the heavens. He was the Messiah. He was the one to lead his people out of bondage. He says, Jesus says, believe. Did you hear John the Baptist telling anybody, believe in me? Jesus says, believe. You believe in God, believe in me also. Believe in me also. In my father's house, he says, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. To myself, he says. And that where I am there, you may also be. And where I, I go, you know. And the way, you know. Of course, the disciples were not. Their minds and understandings their understanding was not enlightened at that time by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not, has, he hasn't come upon them yet. When the Holy Spirit comes, beloved, 
your environment and your horizon, your understanding will be enlightened. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, your understanding will be enlightened. Jesus says, you believe in God, believe in me also. Do not, do not let your heart be troubled. Now follow me to um, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <clears throat> I hope you're learning something. Go right ahead. Please keep sharing the, the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter one. You need to start registering, especially those of you who are part of this ministry. I, I, you have to register. I need to see all of you in this conference. Every one of you. All right. Okay. So second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter one, come with me to chapter one. Um, there's something that um, <clears throat> Apostle Paul said, I want to share that with you. Jesus says, let now your heart be troubled. The word trouble comes to be. <laughs> Joyce who says, uh, and trouble came. <laughs> uh, look at verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 8 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10. For we do not want you to be ignorant. Apostle Paul is talking here. Brethren of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure of our strength, so that we despaired even of life. He said, yes, we had a sentence of death in ourselves we had a sentence of death in ourselves and that we should not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and thus deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us that he will still deliver us that he will still deliver us that he will still deliver us. And Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. They asked Jesus, so what do we do to do the works of God? Jesus says, this is the work of God. This is how you do the work of God. Believe in the one God sent. And after all that, Jesus says, go and tell other people about me. Go and tell people about me. Believe in me. Of what I have done. For humanity and mankind. See yourself complete in me. And nothing else. And see. If I will not. Make a way. When there seems to be no way. You know why? Because I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. I am the way. When you find yourself in completeness in Christ, beloved, you, you, don't, you don't have no trouble. All is left for you is for you to Make sure that your faith is still working in him. <laughs> he said, trouble came to us in Asia. And that we, did, we, we, we have to come to the place of not trusting in ourselves, not believing in ourselves, but in God. But in him, who raised the dead? How many dead people you, have you raised? Trust in him. Jesus, I don't know who is listening to me and what you may be going through. In, listen, I'm not insensitive to say to your plight that I don't care what you're going through. I care to let you know that it don't matter what you're going through if you only receive Jesus into your life and make him your Lord and your Savior. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. Trust me. I wish I could knock on this thing here. Trust me when I tell you. Jesus makes a way where there seems to be no way. 
He knows how to do it. He says, I am the way. Think about that. I am the way. You don't seem to see any way out of that situation. He, he makes a way. Boy, I'm telling you, I say I'm a witness. You don't need to believe me. Wait till you find yourself in trouble and cry out to him and see whether he will, he, whether he will, he will receive you or not. He's opened his arms. He said, listen, I, I want to come in and help you out. Receive me. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend. What a friend. What a friend. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus Christ. The one who died and rose triumphantly on the third day. Now sit at the right side of the Father himself. And still loving you to make intercession for you. Jesus. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Lord have mercy. I feel the anointing in this place, I tell you. And he says, you will receive power when my anointing comes upon you. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, the, 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 the Pentecostals, they say, the, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> The Pentecost has said the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost come upon you. Look, listen. Let me also interject, interject this here. The Holy Spirit is not about shaking and, you know, oh, 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 oh. Eh, 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 eh. Like, like, you know, like somebody is cutting your head off and you, you become like a chicken. And, oh, 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 oh. Eh, eh, eh. That ain't what the Holy Spirit is all about. Stop that foolishness. That ain't, that ain't what the Holy Spirit is all about. It's not about shaking and, you know, twisting and moving your body and be like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I tell you, a whole bunch of human shenanigans that you learn that is not scriptural. Beloved, let me tell you something. Yeah, yesterday, um, first thing I listened, it was, um, I listened to one of our brothers, uh, you know, precious one, brother uh, Michael Lewis, Pastor Michael Lewis, and um, um, he did a short clip about um, emotions. I, I thought that was I mean, such a powerful stuff, powerful clip. Um, and uh, I happened to talk to him in the course of the day yesterday. Beloved, let me say this thing here. And you need to look for it on it's on it's on the Facebook and listen to it. God does not listen to you by your emotions. No. He listens to you by your belief and trust in his son and in his word. Because God stands by his word. And you need to you need to understand how God deals with his people, number one, by covenant and by by dispensation or time. By covenant and by dispensation. You're gonna get more of this in the in the conference. Break it down for you to understand. So that when you are living your life as a Christian now. You will know exactly where you are and position yourself exactly where you ought to be to receive. You don't, you, you're not going to be confused as a bunch of you are confused. Confused. Mixing it all together. You know, scripture talks about not being, you can't put an old wine in a new jar. It's going to burst. A lot of people still do that. Putting an old stuff in a new in a uh, in a new jar, and it keeps busting. And you go and get a new one, it busts. Go and get a new one, it busts. And so you on the same religious treadmill every day, every week you are fasting, every year you are doing this. Every religious act. I'm not talking about the fact that fasting is not good. I'm using that as an example because 
Those are the things that you, you find also in the religious circles. And you still are the same place. Don't you get it? How good how are you? How are you going to be doing the same thing and expect different results? Doing the same thing and getting the different results. How, does, how do you think that works? Common sense should even tell you, I mean, forget about scripture. Common sense tells you that it, it, you need to switch gears. You can't use a first gear to drive from one stage to the other. You're going to mess up the car. Same thing all the time. No, change. And you need to understand that God, God deals with his people by covenant and by dispensation. So you need to understand the covenant in which we are living in. You need to understand that. And you need to understand the dispensation in which we live in. So register. Go right ahead. Information is on your screen now. Call for registration or you can register online go to the website and you see the information there put on your information register you only you listen you are only going to get the the the, the code and the password for the zoom conference when you register you ain't going to get it so don't even think that you know you're going you only you will only get that for you to be part of it it's not free it's not going to be you're like free stuff you go and rather pay for stuff that will not bless you. Well, this will get some materials, okay, that will help you and continue to help you as you go along. So go right ahead and register and tell your friends, share the flyer to your friends and loved ones. It's only one day, just one day. Next week, Wednesday, a week from tomorrow, one day, morning and evening session. All right, the morning section, the information is on your screen. The morning section, all right, it's from 10 a.m. It's all Eastern Standard Time. I think um, it's a it's a different one we we'll put up there. But it's a, uh, it's a Eastern Standard Time, all right? So watch your time, all right, 10 a.m., 10 to 12. That's the first session. The evening session is from 7 to 9. The morning session is from 10 to 12. The evening session is from 7 to 9. And the speakers, yours truly, and um, a beautiful wife, very intelligent. I know some a lot of you were sending comments the other day, last week. You were blessed by her presentation, and that was just a teaser. Mm -hmm. they, I think they said that in journalism. It's a teaser. Put that information there concerning communication, how to communicate. Understanding communication um, in your everyday life, and then especially how to communicate the gospel with understanding. And so, make sure you don't, you know, because listen, if you don't, if you don't get come out of it, you're gonna be there, and forever you'll be there at expense. You know, you should be way up there, but you stay here because. You, you lack understanding. Mm -hmm. What you don't know cannot move you forward. All right. I hope you've, you've had a word today and you are blessed. I, I thank God for your life and I look forward to it. Listen, there's going to be a lot of um, uh, PowerPoints, um, you know, presentations and, and all that. So um, make sure you register. Don't miss it. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. And, uh, and, and and don't think that, you know, if you don't come or later on, we'll put it on air for you to see it. You're not going to see it. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see it. There are some informations. Well, you 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 need to really desire for it. And, and it's like, how much do you want? You know, like Jesus will ask, you know, the pe people, what, what do you want me to do? You want to know if you really desire it. He says, listen, I'm blind. I want to see I'm blind and I want to see. Jesus will ask them. Yeah, because it's like, do you really want? Do you really want this? Or you just, you know, you want a handout? 
And so you have to desire that lesson. And I want, I want, I, I want to come out of my way of thinking. Me sitting down here, you, you don't bring that nonsense of, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, generational case and and the family. Yeah, you see, you, you don't even know where I am. Far away from that, and none of those nonsense has any effect on me because of where I am. But if I didn't know. By, by the help of the Holy Spirit, I will still be calling myself and still be believing all kinds of religious beliefs that does, that does not emancipate me to enjoy my freedom in Christ Jesus. And Jesus came to set us free. Let me show you that and I will, I will let you go. Come to um, Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, and I'm going to let you go. Our freedom is in Christ Jesus. Galatians chapter 3. I want to show you that, and I'm going to let you go, okay? Look at um, <clears throat> Galatians chapter 3. Look at... Um, Look at uh, verse. Uh, verse. Let's read from verse 20, 22. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise of faith in Christ Jesus might be given to those who believe. Get that revelation here. Get that revelation here. The scripture has confined all under sin. That the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Who believe in what? Believe in Jesus. That Jesus is complete for them. Nothing missing, nothing broken. But before faith came, we were kept under God by the law kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. The law brought us to Christ. So if the law has brought us to Christ, why are you still looking to the law? But after faith has come, we are no longer under the tutor of the law. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Man, I think I'm done. Did you hear that? There's more. I'm telling you. I'm going to. I mean, you you position yourself to re, to receive some truth, and if you can understand that and and receive it and walk it, you're going to see something that I'm telling you. You're going to remember this September. You will remember this September because in this ninth month, your aspirations and dreams and your visions and goals and all that should be should be birthed out of your understanding of the word of God. Out of the understanding of the word of God. So I, I, I want to encourage every one of you, register, go right ahead and start registering now. Go to the website of this ministry, Patrickwenu Ministries.com. All right, first um, page, I believe it's there. You can, you see register, registration. Click on it and register. Put all your information there and write up because immediately you click send after your registration. We get the notification and then send you the password and the code for you um, to participate in the conference. So go right ahead and register right now. Invite somebody, tell somebody, share it. Tell others to register and you're not, you're not going to regret this. I'm telling you, so much information for you. See, the, the, the whole idea is for you to not forget this month of delivery. In the ninth month, the baby ought to be born. If not, we got to force the baby out. And it's not a pleasant thing, according to women. So in this ninth month, listen. I'm telling you that irrespective of this COVID-19, I told you from beginning, 
with Hebrews chapter 12, especially the second verse. That was our theme for the year. When all people were talking about, you know, it's the year of 2020. Well, listen, it's a year of still the double year. You will receive this double dimensions and, and uh, blessings on your life if you understand what is happening. Understanding will keep you. Proverbs chapter chapter 2 verse 10 says on 11. Say, understanding will keep you. So you need to get understanding. In Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, but in all thy getting. All right. So make sure you register now and uh, be a part of this. Don't miss out. And I'm especially those of you who are part of this ministry, you should be the first one to even run and get this thing done. So I'm going to let you go today. I believe you've learned a thing or two. Receive it. Don't let it go. Keep it to yourself. Work it. Live it. Let it just simmer in you and uh, take good roots out of you for you to enjoy your life right here and uh, have everlasting life. In Christ Jesus. Now, for this reason, if you have not given your life to Jesus, made him your truly, truly, not a religious way of receiving Jesus, but have him truly as your Lord and your Savior, to know that he is and nobody else. If, he's, if he doesn't do it, nobody going to do it. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want, I want to give you the opportunity to respond to all that you've heard. Respond. Altar call is, uh, is, 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 is responding to what you've heard. And again, it's not my place to convince you. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. And I know he's already speaking to you. Today, the Bible says, when you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. You have, listen, what do you have to lose? By receiving Jesus and his spirit. What do you have to lose? Nothing. Why don't you give it a shot? That's for me. Just give it a shot. See if you you will see him at work in your life or not. Give him a shot. And if you are that person, I want to pray with you. I want you to pray this prayer together. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to hear this message i thank you for this teaching i am a sinner i ask you to forgive me my sins lord jesus come into my life and into my heart i believe you in my heart and i confess you with my mouth that god raised you from the dead i thank you today that I have had the opportunity to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Now, Jesus, baptize me with your spirit that I may understand your word, that I may be led to all truth. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Beloved, don't stop right there. If you do not have the word of God, this is this is the sword of the spirit. Hmm? As Apostle Paul would put it, the sword of the spirit. All right, not not that sword, you know, that you fight with. Sometimes you see people have swords, you know, they you know, the preachers they go and buy sword that you know that the uh, the uh, um 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 uh, people fight with swords, you know, those sword no, this is the sword. That, 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 that's not that. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Make sure you get your sword. All right? The Bible. Get it. Today, like I said, they are in different languages. Whichever language you can read and understand, get it in it. All right? If, if you cannot find, find one or cannot afford one, please let us know. All right? We will send you a Bible. Mm -hmm. we'll send even in the language that you can read and understand yeah we do that so make sure um, we hear from you today okay 
God bless you. And um, also, go right ahead and register. All right, put that information there one, one more time. Um, to register, go and register now. Call for the registration. The number is, is there for area code. If you are calling from United outside the United States, all right, from the USA, it's plus one and four seven zero three six three three eight eight six. The numbers again for registration only. One, or if you are outside America, it's plus one four seven zero three six three three eight eight six. That is specifically for for registration of the conference next week, Wednesday, the 30th of September. In this month, I'm telling you when you have received this information, you will definitely birth that baby that you've been carrying. And uh, I can't wait to hear your testimonies. For 20 something years, God has always proven himself. In the conference of September to remember for 20, maybe 23 years. And uh, this ain't going to be no different, but rather increase. So I can't wait to hear your testimony because I know God, as always, will do something great for you. So register. Go right and register. Go to the website. Register. Or you can call for your registration and then you will receive the your password and um, information for uh for your participation um in the conference okay all right so i look forward to hearing from you i'm done for the day all right make sure that we, i hear from you as well if you are just giving your life to jesus let me hear from you i have a gift for for you so let me hear from you as well until I see you same time, God willing, tomorrow, share the broadcast to your friends and loved ones. Tell everybody, share the flyer or for the conference. It's coming up one day, morning and evening session, Zoom conference 2020, September to remember. Your life will never be the same, I promise you. All right, until then, you don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God and in all that getting Get understanding. See you all. God bless you.